So let's go to question number 10. Question number 10. A student prepared a sample of sulfur dioxide in the laboratory by the action of dilute hydrochloric acid on sodium sulfide according to the equation below. So that's the equation. You have it in the paper. What name is, what is the purpose of the concentrated sulfuric acid? So concentrated sulfuric acid, its purpose is only to act as a catalyst so that the reaction can be speeded up. Question number two, describe a chemical test for sulfur dioxide. So in order for you to know that you've got sulfur dioxide, you have to pass the gas, which is the sulfur dioxide gas, or the gas that you're not sure of. You pass it over a piece of filter paper, which is soaked in acid-filled sodium chromate. Once you pass it in a filter paper that has been soaked in acid-filled sodium chromate, if the gas contains sulfur dioxide, the paper will change color from orange to green. So when that paper changes color from orange to green, you know that you've got uh, sulfur dioxide. That's the chemical test for sulfur dioxide. Question number three. Sulfur dioxide is one of the major pollutant gas of air. Uh, it dissolves in rainwater in the presence of oxygen to form sulfuric acid making the rain acidic. Write a balanced chemical equation for the formation of sulfuric acid by reaction of water with sulfur dioxide and atmospheric oxygen. So this is the balanced equation. This equation is very tricky to balance it. So this is the balanced equation. Sulfur dioxide, it will react plus water in the air. And we know that in the air, there's a presence of oxygen. So by so doing, we are going to come up with sulfuric acid. But the balanced equation, in case you are, you can be asked in your test, in your exams again, this is the balanced equation for sulfur dioxide gas reacting with water to form sulfuric acid. State 1, hazardous effect of acid rain to the, on the environment. So hazardous effect of acid rain, you can state more, but since the question has demanded to state one, you can pick any one of these. Acid drain destroys plants, crops, and it also destroys aquatic life. Uh, question B of question number 11. One of the uses of sulfur dioxide is in the manufacture of sulfuric acid. Sulfur dioxide is reacted with oxygen to form sulfur trioxide according to the the equation that is the equation state the conditions used in the contact process to get a good yield of sulfur trioxide so to get a good yield of sulfur trioxide in the contact process the conditions must be you need to have a temperature which ranges from 400 to 450 degrees celsius yeah, so you need to have a temperature ranging from 400 to 450 degrees Celsius. That's the condition number one. Condition number two, you need to have pressure ranging from one to two atmospheric pressure, ATM. Question number three, you need to have a catalyst, not any other catalyst, but it has to be vanadium 5 oxide. So once you meet these conditions, then it will be easy for you to work or to yield to produce a lot of sulfur trioxide using the contact process. Question number two, describe how sulfur trioxide is safely converted into sulfuric acid. So for sulfur trioxide to convert itself into sulfuric acid, you just don't add water there and then. No wonder why the question has said safely converted. For you to convert it safely, first of all, that sulfur trioxide, it has to be dissolved in concentrated sulfuric acid. After being dissolved in concentrated sulfuric acid, then it has to be reacted with water and produce a good sulfuric acid. That's how safely you can convert uh, sulfur trioxide into sulfuric acid. It has to be passed first or dissolved in concentrated acid. The last question for question number 11 it says state one commercial use of sulfuric acid. So sulfuric acid... It has got a lot of uses, but one commercial used globally, it is used mostly in the production of 
fertilizers, the NKP fertilizers, sodium, potassium, and phosphorus fertilizers. So in producing those fertilizers, they utilize mostly the sulfuric acid. Hope this question is clear. Whoa, this was question number, this was question number 10 actually. So we move on to question number 11 now. Question number 11 is about metals, strictly extraction of metals. You are given that table. You have given that table where you have elements, aluminum, copper, and zinc. Then the question says, copy the table below and complete it by naming the main ore and method of extraction of the metal from the ore. So many ore, so you've got the element aluminum. The many ore for aluminum is the bauxite. Method of extraction is electrolysis. Many ore for copper, it is cow copyright. And uh, method of extraction, that's a frothy flotation. Zinc, you've got zinc sulfide. Zinc sulfide, that's the ore for zinc. Then its method of extraction, it is actually the reduction process in a blast furnace. Same way to extract copper, that's how zinc is extracted. Question B, which of the metals in the table is quickly coated with an oxide layer when exposed to air making it unreactive? It is actually aluminum. Aluminum is a very reactive element. If you check your reactivity series, aluminum is very reactive. But when you find it in nature, it appears not to be reactive. The reason being is once you obtain your aluminum element, once you obtain it, once it is exposed to the environment, the aluminum element will react with oxygen and it will be coated with oxygen, making it a reactive element. So it's aluminum. Question 2b, bronze is an alloy. Which two metals are alloyed to produce bronze? So to produce bronze, you've got copper and tin. Specifically, you need about 88% copper and 12% tin, and you're going to come up with bronze. Question C, state two reasons why alloys are preferred to pure metals. So alloys are, pre are preferred to pure metals because most of the alloys are strong and they resist corrosion. Yeah, they resist corrosion. Rust is an example of corrosion. Rusting is an example of corrosion. So rusting, we only use it for iron, but for these other metals, we use the word corrosion. So most of alloys, they resist corrosion and they are very strong. So they are preferred to be used other than pure metals. Question D, probably the last question of question number 11. Write an equation for the reaction when of when one of the metals reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid. Oh, so question D has got Roman numeral 1 and Roman numeral 2. Roman numeral 1, what products are formed when the metal oxide reacts with an acid and an alkali? So you are going to have a salt and a base, which is a soluble base. Then the equation which is demanded on the last part of the question, you are going to have copper oxide, which is any other oxide mentioned, plus hydrochloric acid. You are going to have a salt, which is copper chloride, copper to chloride, a salt, and water. <coughs> so that's it with question number 11. We move on to the last question, which is question number 12. Question number 12 is about organic chemistry. It all always comes to never miss in an exam of chemistry. So organic chemistry, we've got this structure. And this structure is an ester. So the structure formula of an ester is given below. And this is the structure I've drawn it for you. Question number A. Describe how the above ester can be prepared in the laboratory by naming the reagents and the conditions needed for successful reaction. So let us name the reagents from this ester. I'll show you a quick and simple method of naming reagents when given a structure of an ester. You just cut the bond which connects oxygen and carbon. 
this bond which connects oxygen and carbon. You cut it. Then after cutting it, the part that will have double bonds connecting carbon and oxygen, the part which, are, which will have double bonds connecting carbon and oxygen is the acid part. Then the part which will have one bond connecting oxygen and uh, carbon, it is actually alcohol part. Once more, first thing, you cut the bond which connects carbon and oxygen. After cutting it, the part that has double bonds which connects carbon and oxygen is the acid part. And the part that has a single bond which connects carbon and oxygen is the alcohol part. So what acid is this? This acid, it has got two carbon atoms. Two carbon atoms is actually ethanoic acid. Then what alcohol is this? This alcohol has one, two, three carbon atoms. So three carbon atoms, it is actually proper, propano. So name the reagents which were used to make this ester. It is actually ethanoic acid and propano. So ethanoic acid reacts with propano under the presence of, this is the condition which is needed now as a catalyst, concentrated sulfuric acid. So once you have concentrated sulfuric acid, then ethanoic acid reacts with propano. You are going to get this ester or rather ester. I don't know which way is best to pronounce it which is called ethyl propanoid. That's it. The second question, what observation will confirm that the, an ester has been formed in the reaction? So for us to confirm that the ester has been formed, we are going to feel a pleasant smell. That's the chemical test for esters, a pleasant smell. Once we get that pleasant smell, we'll know that an ester has been formed. Question number B is on the separate question. Still under organic quest, organic part. Question number B. Terylene is a polyester formed from carboxylic acid and alcohol units. Name two monomers used to make terylene. So terylene is used, is made from the process called condensation reaction, where water is produced in that reaction. So the monomers which are needed for you to come up with terylene, you need to have 1,4 benzene dicarboxylic acid and 2,2 or 1,2 ethanol. So 1,2 ethanol and 1,4 benzene dicarboxylic acid they are the monomers which will give you terylene. If you you don't seem to remember these words, you can just say carboxylic acid and duo. You just write carboxylic acid and duo. They will still mark you in an exam, as in the monomers which will give you terylene. Number two, draw the structural formula of terylene showing only four monomer units. So I've run out of space. I can't draw all of it since I'm using a marker. But the monomer unit, this is the monomer unit. This is it. So you just have to repeat this four times. That's all. Once you repeat this four times, you've drawn the structure of four monomer units of that one. So these kind of structures, you have no choice but to master them. Number three, state one use of terylene. So one use of terylene, I've written for you two. You can choose one. Terylene, it is used in making plastic bottles. It is also used in clothing. Yeah, clothing, you can also use terylene. And this uh, wraps up the working out of 2016 paper 2 chemistry with you guys. So you can check out for some more videos which have a lot more of working for these past papers.